getting lectured about military matters by the French and then being accused of clumsiness by Joe Biden is a bit much. Apparently, black swans have a unique taste and extremely high nutritional value. Don't get sick. And if you are going to get sick, don't call an ambulance because you'll be stuck inside it for days. The French say Scott Morrison lied to them about the subs deal. ScoMo thought defending his half assed plan to get to net zero by 2050 was going to be the toughest gig at Glasgow. Then he gets shirt fronted by the French over his decision to tear up the contract for them to build diesel powered subs because we wanted nuclear ones. You think he lied to you? I don't think. I know. Macron reckons Australia didn't show respect. And when he wasn't giving ScoMo the old stink eye, he was getting lovey with Joe Biden. <laughs> and watching with Gaelic smugness as the rest of COP26 ghosted Morrison. Don't give up. So awkward for ScoMo. Imagine the ride back to the hotel. Flight's taken. Taken. It's very rare for an ally to call a national leader a flat-out liar. Unless, perhaps, there's an upcoming election. The French go to the polls in April. Macron's showboating for his domestic audience and Biden gave him a leg up when he said he thought Morrison had been clumsy with the subs announcement. This guy... ..who seems bewildered by everything... I keep forgetting I'm president. ..who did the most awkward stage entrance in the history of political conventions is having a go at us for being clumsy. This is the same American president who couldn't remember Morrison's name at the press conference to announce the nuclear subs deal. And I want to thank uh, that fellow down under. I don't like springing to the defence of a politician, but getting lectured about military matters by the French... <laughs> <laughs> ..and then being accused of clumsiness by Joe Biden... ..is a bit much. Morrison's prime ministership hasn't been a gaff-free zone. Yoga, uh, Barre, I hope I've pronounced that correct. I might need some help with that. But not knowing the name of a ballet, yoga, Pilates mashup is nothing compared to Biden's inability to construct a coherent sentence. As one computer said, if you're on the train and they say Portal Bridge, you know you better make other plans. What? Joe should have done what he usually does when confronted with a complicated issue. Stay silent. It says something about Australia's diplomatic expertise when we announce a military treaty that pisses off the Chinese, New Zealand, the French, the Americans and North Korea. North Korea has bigger problems. Countries run out of food. Even dear leaders lost 20 kilos. They're searching for a new source of protein and they think they've found it. Apparently, black swans have a unique taste and extremely high nutritional value. How do you feel about that? I'm not comfortable with it. It's part of our coat of arms. Willem de Vlaming named the Swan River after them. Some say they're a bad omen. In many parts of the world, it's taboo to eat black swans, even in China which is saying something, because they pretty much eat anything. But that won't stop them being bred by Little Rocket Man. Do you know how hungry you need to be to eat one of these things? Have a look at them. The UN says Pyongyang needs 860,000 tonnes of food. A fully grown black swan weighs nine kilos. That's a lot of bird. And you just know they're going to eventually eat the babies. Aww. Oh. I eat a baby! Stop, that makes me feel ill. Don't get sick. And if you are going to get sick, don't call an ambulance because you'll be stuck inside it for days. When Mark McGowan came to office in 2017, ambulances spent 9,800 hours waiting outside hospitals to offload patients because EDs were too full to accept them. With two months to go, ambulances were ramped in 2021 for this many hours. We're all a bit desensitised to these stats at the moment, but here's why you should be worried. If you go to an emergency department that's crowded, you have a 10% greater chance of dying in the next seven days. McGowan says every state has the same problem of overcrowding. And I've spoken to the Liberal Premier of South Australia, he said the same thing. The Liberal Premier of Tasmania said the same thing. Uh, 
It's happening all over Australia. The AMA wants an extra $500 million pumped into the health system every year for the next four years. Well, McGowan's got a $5 billion surplus. Why doesn't he just do it? I think if the doctors gave McGowan a guarantee the money would solve the problem, he probably would do it. But he knows the odds of that happening are pretty long. One of the first things McGowan did after winning the election in March 2017 was commission something called the Sustainable Health Review. It took two years for the report to be finalised. And when it was... McGowan freaked out because one of its findings was the health budget was on track to consume 38% of the total state budget by 2026. So McGowan turned off the tap. That was fine for a while. Things kept ticking along in much the same way as your car doesn't feel very different if you wait until after six months or 10,000 kilometres to get it serviced. But eventually you need an oil change. The WA health system is now the equivalent of Uncle Buck's two-door Mercury. McGowan says the current demand has come out of the blue. There's just huge pressure on our hospital system that has never been seen before. It hasn't. The first key fact highlighted by the Sustainable Health Review was that ED attendances have outpaced population growth over the past 10 years. So the writing was on the wall. Yeah. What about the solution? Well, two years ago, the review laid out eight strategies to fix the system, 30 individual recommendations. We ignored pretty much all of them. It specifically warned that more beds were not the answer. These resources will make a significant difference. Roger must have skipped over that bit. It's tough. It's tough out there. We were meant to spearhead a bold generational focus on lowering levels of obesity and harmful alcohol. But lockdowns happened and the COVID kilos piled on and one o'clock got earlier and earlier. Mental health was meant to have been tackled. Bit of work left there. Looking after expectant mums was a priority. And we turned them away at the front door. WA Health was meant to have ensured that hospitals no longer continue to be the default aged care provider, which clearly nobody got around to looking at because a few weeks ago the Premier was blaming oldies for clogging up ED beds. Enduring strategy number five said new funding mechanisms will drive quality and value for patient care and community, supporting new models of care and joint commissioning with primary care and the non-government sector. Joe Biden makes more sense than that. Thank you very much, pal. We were meant to invest in digital healthcare and use data wisely, which we did, to solve a bikey murder. We were going to better support doctors and nurses, but then hang them out to dry if something went wrong. And the last strategy pillar was innovate for sustainability, which called for us to invent our way out of the problem. I'm a cybernetic organism, living tissue over a metal endoskeleton. Well, it's not like we can exactly wave a white flag. I know what you're doing there. You're teeing it up so that I take the piss out of the French. And I'm not going to. Because even cheese-eating surrender monkeys deserve respect. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.